بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأثني عليه الخير كله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد we are discussing or we started to discuss the story of Uqba ibn Nafi' al-Fihri al-Qurashi one of the great commanders of al-Islam and I think that this personality is not known for so many Muslims and this commander he was an army commander a military commander and I wanted to speak about his personality in order to show that we did not have just scholars we are not speaking about the scholars rather than we have great people in every field of life. Uqba ibn Nafi, he was the commander appointed by the governor of Egypt, whether Amr ibn al-As or ibn Abi Sarh, ibn Abi Sarh to open more lands for Islam and Muslims. Opening, opening the land for Islam and Muslim, what does it mean? Once we say, conquering the land. What does that mean? It means that Muslims will be in charge of that land. And once they are in charge of that land, they open it for Islam and Muslims. And hence, the people living in that land will see the beauty of Islam. And we, they will have the chance to what? To, to accept Islam. And that's why when we say conquering it or being in charge of it, means to put the Islamic system, which is the law of Allah Jalla wa ala, as the law of governance. And once people see the Islamic system being implemented, and once they see it as the law of governance, then they will see the beauty of Islam, because any other system other than the law of Allah Jalla wa ala is considered to be darkness. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, Allah nurus samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of heavens and earth. So once we put the light of Allah Jalla wa Ala in charge of any land, then people will what? Will see this light of Allah Jalla wa Ala, and that's why they will have the opportunity to accept Islam. This is what we mean by opening a land for Islam and Muslims. And that's why the companions of the Prophet وسلم, who used to be the righteous people, they were so keen to open the lands for Islam and Muslims. And that's why, and this is one of the reasons, Islam expanded and people had the opportunity to, to, to see Islam and to experience Islam as a law of governance. Uqba ibn Nafi' radiallahu ta'ala anhu started to open more lands in Libya, Tunisia and Algeria. And he almost opened most of these areas during the time of uh, Yazid ibn Muawiyah around 60 something between 60 and uh, between 60 and 63 when he was killed radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uqba ibn Nafi' uh, we said that there was a tension between him and another commander who was appointed uh, in his position uh, called Abu al-Muhajir. There was a tension between both of them. But Uqba ibn Nafi' radiallahu ta'ala anhu spent the time between 21 and uh, 55 and then uh, to 63 in jihad from year 21 all the way until the time he was killed as a, as a shaheed 63 he spent that time in jihad how many years 40 something years in jihad radiallahu ta'ala anhu they said in respect of, of this, this person, he was not concerned about dunya. He doesn't want anything from the dunya. His aim was to die as a shaheed fi sabilillah. And Allah Jalla wa ala granted him this position and he died as a shaheed. We say that jihad is the 
top pillar of al Islam is at the peak of al Islam Dhurwatu Sanam al Islam the Prophet وسلم, said that the Mujahid is given the, ch the chance to intercede for 70 members of his family 70 members of his family will receive intercession at the day of resurrection from this person the Shaheed the Shaheed is the only person as the Prophet وسلم, said is the only person who would like to go back to dunya subhanallah why because he witnessed the reward that Allah Jalla gives it gives to shaheed which is an immense reward that no one else gets it except the anbiya and the siddiqeen the anbiya are of the highest grade in jannah followed by the siddiqeen followed by the shuhada and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the shaheed will get married to 70 virgins the shaheed will get married to 70 virgins of the hur al ain 70 of the hur al ain and allah jalla wa ala forgive the sins of the shaheed all the sins of shaheed when just when he leaves this dunya when he, when his blood starts uh, flowing he will receive the forgiveness of Allah Jalla wa ala for all of his sins and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the Shaheed will have all his sins forgiven except debt or rights of others which shows the importance of rights of others Uqba ibn Nafi' wanted to die a uh, Shaheed so that's why he was not concerned about what is happening the political tension at that time and we know that in around year 40 there was a tension between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu may Allah jalla wa ala be pleased with them and we know what took place even with Abdullah ibn Zubair and uh, Al-Hajjaj and what Al-Hajjaj di did so at that time there was <coughs> sort of uh, instability in uh, a political instability Uqba ibn Nafi' radiallahu ta'ala anhu he did not pay attention to this he did not join the camp of Ali ibn Abi Talib nor he did join the camp of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan they said that he was going with the flow whoever was appointed as the Khalifa of Muslims Uqba ibn Nafi' was working for him because he has he had an aim and the aim is to continue doing jihad until he will be killed as a shaheed and Allah Jalla wa ala gave him this they said that Uqba ibn Nafi' was a very pious person was a zahid person who was not concerned about dunya about worldly affairs uh, they said also that he was a mustajab dua a person whom Allah Jalla wa ala accepts his dua and they narrate the famous story of establishing the city of Qayrawan. Qayrawan is a city in Tunisia, what is known as Tunisia now. It's a very famous city, it's a very old city, uh, and some <coughs> scholars say, or some historians say that it is the second oldest city. Some of them, they say that it is the oldest Islamic city in northern of Africa and it has a very large masjid and it has a university now and they said that Uqba ibn Nafi' was the person to establish the university the first university in Al Qayrawan which according to many historians is the first university in the first Islamic university in northern of Africa um, the story to establish this city was uh, like this Uqba ibn Nafi' noticed that whenever Muslims uh, open an area and then move to the second area or to the uh, next area some people in the previous area might leave Islam and it happened that he opened an area for Islam and Muslims 
and the people accepted Islam and he had like an agreement or a, a contract with one of the Roman leaders in one of the areas that this Roman leader will give jizya to Muslims and will not fight Muslims. And then when Uqba ibn Nafi left the area, that leader, that Roman leader, broke the covenant or broke the agreement and he started to fight Islam and Muslims and that's why Uqba ibn Nafi was very angry from him and when Uqba ibn Nafi took over that city again he humiliated this person and he told him so you remember that you will not fight Muslims again and you don't break your promise again they were very mighty people this is our legacy brothers and sisters anyway Uqba ibn Nafi uh, wanted to build a city to be a center for Islam and Muslims. The city of Qairawan that we have just mentioned. He wanted it to be a center for the Muslim army, a center for the Islamic civilization at that time, and a center for Muslims to spread da'wah in the area uh, in, in, in north of Africa. So he consulted engineers, he consulted other experts to choose an area to establish that city. So they told him that uh, we should have a city next to the sea. He said, if we have a city, if we establish the city next to the sea, then we will be easily attacked by Sahib uh, al-Qustantiniya, by the Romans, because we are very close and they might come uh, by sea on their boats and they can attack us easily. So he said, we need to move away from the uh, sea. So they said, they selected another area for him, but that area was quite far. He said, no, we want an area which is close to the sea, not next to the sea. It, it is not on the sea coast, no, close to the sea coast, but a uh, little bit far, not very far, so the people who stay in that city with the intention to be murabiteen. What does murabiteen mean? Those who are protecting the borders of the Islamic State. So if people want to join and to stay in that city as murabiteen, then they will be considered as murabiteen, although this city is not next to the sea, but it is very close to the sea and the distance between the sea and the city is not considered to be uh, a far distant where a musafir needs to shorten his prayer. So this, is, this was his fiqh. If it is a long distance, then the musafir needs to shorten his prayer, which means that it is a remote city which consequently means that it will not be a city of ribat and the people will not be murabiteen and they will not get the reward of murabiteen this is the end of this segment we will continue the discussion of the story of uqba ibn nafi inshallah after the break stay with us assalamu alaykum Life is a journey, beginning with a single step. The direction is clear. But it still needs guidance. Put a GPS.
astray. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We were discussing the story of Uqba ibn Nafi', that great commander who opened most of North Africa for Islam and Muslims. We said that Uqba ibn Nafi' was appointed as the commander in that area, and he wanted to open, to establish a city to be a capital for Muslims in that area and to be a city where Islam can spread. Uh, Uqba ibn Nafi' selected that area, and we mentioned why he selected that area, not immediately on the sea coast, but a little bit far, not very far, so the people who are sitting there or staying there will be considered as murabitun because they will be considered as if they are uh, staying in the borders of the Islamic State. Uh, so they will get the reward. That was... Uh, the view of Uqba ibn Nafi'. They said when he wanted to establish that city in that land, they found that it is full of animals, uh, snakes, wolves, and uh, <coughs> other dangerous anim animals. So they said to him, this is the problem of that land. How can we deal with this? Ibn Kathir and many other histo historians said that Uqba ibn Nafi' stood up next to that land and he raised his hands and he started to make dua to Allah Jalla wa ala. In one statement or in one um, narration, he said, we are going to stay in this land. We are going to take it as our city and we ask you to leave it or we command you to leave it. One of the narrators said, By Allah, there has no stone that has a snake under it, except the snake left the place. And he saw that I saw wolves carrying their babies and evacuating that area. So Allah Jalla wa ala accepted his dua. This is amazing, brothers and sisters, that we always rely on materialistic means. We rarely uh, rely on dua. Even if we want to ask Allah Jalla wa ala for something or we think of dua, we think of dua in terms of rizq. We think of dua in terms of sickness, illnesses, etc. We rarely think of making dua to Allah Jalla wa ala to support us in things like this in social matters, in political matters, in maybe engineering matters, in matters uh, regarding construction and building cities, etc., or any other matters. Uqba ibn Nafi, he found that the only solution for this, or in fact, the solution that he thought of immediately is to who? To ask the Lord of those animals to ask the Lord of those animals to command them to evacuate the place for him and they vacated the place and then they established the city, the famous city of Al-Qayrawan <coughs> and that city became the capital of that area and it started to, uh, uh, started to, uh, to, to be a center for a civilization for Muslims in that area, and many people accepted Islam because of the presence of Muslims in that area. Uqba ibn ta'ala anhu continued doing jihad and opening more lands. We said that there was a tension between him and Abu al-Muhajir. Uh, I want to mention one important story that many, that uh, uh, that some historians mentioned in the story of Uqba ibn Nafi'. They said that when uh, Uqba ibn Nafi' was reappointed as the commander of that area, Abu al-Muhajir joined him. Although there was a tension between them, but both of them are keen to do jihad. They were not concerned about other matters. So Abu al-Muhajir joined him. And Abu al-Muhajir now was working under him. 
despite the fact Abu uh, Uqba ibn Nafi' was working under Abu al-Muhajir, but when the Khalifa changed the or swapped the uh, roles, Abu al-Muhajir now started to be working under Uqba ibn Nafi' without any problem. There was an incident where there is uh, or there was a leader of a tribe of Berber. The Berber, the Berber were the main people living in North Africa, and still they are living in North Africa, known as Berber. Uh, those Berber, they don't speak Arabic, of course, they have the, uh, their uh, local language. They said that they were not enemies of Muslims as the Romans were enemies of Muslims. And in fact, they did not fight Muslims. Very few of them fought Muslims in a few locations only. Uh, ibn Nafi' one time uh, uh, captured one of their leaders called Kasira. And he dealt with him in a very unwise way. He humiliated him, in fact. Abu al-Muhajir said to Uqba ibn Nafi' Ya ayyuha al-Amir O Amir This is not the best way to deal with this person The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam honored al-Aqra ibn Habis when he was not a Muslim in order to walk to bring his heart towards Islam This is called mu'allafa qulubuhum Those mushriks who want to become Muslims or those mushriks whom we want to avoid their evil we try to give them from zakah in order to what? In order to bring their hearts to Islam. So uh, Abu al-Muhajir told Uqba ibn Nafi' this was not a wise way to deal with who? With this person, Kasila, the leader of a tribe of Berber. Kasila became angry of the way Uqba ibn Nafi' dealt with him and he started to what? to plot against Uqba ibn Nafi' and the army of Muslims. And uh, the, the plot he played against Uqba ibn Nafi' was a reason for the defeat that happened, in, uh, that happened to Uqba ibn Nafi' at a certain point. The point I would like to mention here is, although Uqba ibn Nafi' was a successful commander, but in this incident, he was not successful from a political perspective, a political shari perspective, because bringing the hearts of mushriks close to Islam or uh, keeping away from their shar by giving them money, this is a shari matter. And in fact, it is a political matter, a political maneuver in order to marginalize part of your enemies. So, Uqba ibn Nafi' was not successful in marginalizing those people. Uqba ibn Nafi', he was a great commander, but it is not necessarily that any great commander will be great in any other field. Some people can. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was great in everything. He was a great commander, military commander. He was a great politician. He was a great as a social worker. He was great in everything. But not everyone can be like this. That does not mean that this person will not uh, be a successful person in his field. That does not uh, mean that this person should be sacked from the position. In fact, this shows that we need consultation and we need to listen to each other and we need to benefit from the views of other people. Anyway, the story goes on until Uqba ibn Nafi' uh, had a fight with Romans who were living in that area. And uh, when he fought the Romans, at one point he left his army in one city and he moved to another city. The Romans noticed that he was uh, with a few number of his people. So they said that this was a perfect time to attack him. Abu al-Muhajir at that time was very close to him and he said to him, I want to fight as well. 
So despite the rift that was between them, but both of them want to fight and to die as shaheed, subhanallah, which shows that whatever we read in our history, brothers and sisters, the tension that used to take place between some personalities, that tension is considered or should be considered as a normal reaction for human beings. <coughs> they were not prophets, but the love, the unity, the uh, honor they used to exchange to each other was established. And this is what happened between Abu al-Muhajir and Uqba ibn Nafi' at that time. And both of them fought against the enemies and the Romans were successful in killing Uqba ibn Nafi' and he died as a shaheed. May Allah Jalla wa ala accept him as a shaheed. He was killed in year 63 of Hijrah. This is the end of the story of Uqba ibn Nafi, of course, we can't expand a lot on his story, but I hope that I have given you a glimpse about his story. May Allah Jalla wa Ala make him as a shaheed. Make, uh, may Allah Jalla wa Ala accept us as shuhada and give us the opportunity to be shuhada. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.